Welcome back to a wonderful another episode here in Cannabis Europa at the Barbican in Central London. We're on the Business Cannabis Podcast. I'm your host SKV, and uh, here we have a lovely, lovely guest, Michael. How are you, my friend? Very good, thank you. So. This is going to be a wonderful conversation. Uh, Michael is the Chief Medical Officer of Cureleaf International. And uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit of what you've seen at the show here and some of the developments in some of the drug pathways across Europe. So tell us a little bit more quick, quickly, let's start with some context. How did you become the Chief Medical Officer of Cureleaf? Uh, good question. So I'm actually a, I'm a surgeon. Um, oh, wow. I be became interested in medical cannabis really through research. Um, Really through, um, we were looking at some interesting anti-inflammatory properties of cancer drugs. They stumbled across CBD. This was a, seven or eight years ago. Um, and there it started, really. And, but then I've always, always had patients who've asked if cannabis has a role in pain relief. Unfortunately, I cause a lot of pain uh, in the short term as a yeah. surgeon. Um, so I, I've kept my... Um, you know, I've kept my eye on the evidence base it's been, as it's been building. And then when the law changed here, uh, we thought, right, now's the time where we can start um, building it together. And we launched um, a, what we called Sapphire Medical Clinics then, which was the first medical cannabis clinic uh, here in the UK. Yep. Uh, and we really did that to, to build the evidence base, to collect real world evidence data and to um, use that in uh, drug development, which is what we're doing at Cureleaf International. That is incredible and you know really drives a lot of the credibility around the the industry the medicinal industry in, in, in cannabis if you don't mind me asking what kind of uh, surgeon are you or what do you specialize in i'm a pancreas and liver cancer surgeon wow look at yeah. that and now okay that's incredible the whole, whole other conversation on that but how did you find the role at Cureleaf and how did, you know, from, from the clinic, from the acquisition or uh, is that how you kind of yeah, came into exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. So I was, I was involved um, in the um, research, the clinical research program at EMAC, which yeah. was the company that was acquired by Cureleaf to become Cureleaf International. Then Sapphire also became part of the family, uh, which is now Cureleaf Clinic. Yeah. Um, and so my role really, um, I initially ran the clinic. Um, but now my role is really focused on um, drug development um, and clinic facing activities. So we have a new clinic that's just launched in Sweden, for instance. Congratulations. I'm heavily involved in that. Yeah, that's really exciting. We've seen some really great feedback on that. But, but my, my main role, I'd say now, is trying to work out how to optimize uh, cannabis as a medicine. And, and cannabis is interesting in that, you know, this is a plant that we think works for a number of different conditions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it has, you know, 120, 130 cannabinoids, yeah. same number of terpenes, uh, flavonoids. You know, there's a lot of molecules in there that we simply don't understand what they do in the treatment of disease. Yeah. Um, and so what we've been trying to do is just approach this in a um, quite similar way to traditional drug development. So we've taken, we've gone back to the lab. We've done, uh, we have, for instance, one of our interests is neuropathic pain. So we've set up in vitro petri dish models of, you know, uh, rat dorsal root ganglion neurons, pain cells, essentially, where we can monitor the analgesic effects of cannabinoids. And so what we've been able to do is we've been able to work out what cannabinoids work best in combination, what terpenes work best in combination for pain relief, and what combinations of those cannabinoids and terpenes work best. And so... Wow. We're really excited right now. Uh, we have a, a combination which we're actually just filing a patent around, which kills a pain signal in a petri dish. Um, and this isn't a this isn't a combination of cannabinoids and terpenes that you would naturally find when you do an extract. Yeah. Uh, but this is this is exactly the point. We think the constituents of the plant work uh, in the treatment of pain in this case. But we can optimize it further to provide better medicines for patients. Wow, I have uh, one zillion questions. Um, but you know, if I had to distill uh, the, the questions I have down, is you know, what what are the major um, the major pieces of what you're seeing in terms of the minor cannabinoids? You know, we hear a lot about CBG. We hear a lot about um, you know THCV. We're, we're we're finding out a lot, at least from my perspective, in in, in you know in the Canadian market, the U.S. market, and so. From the perspective of minor cannabinoids right now, what are you seeing that has the most efficacy as it relates to pain management? Um, well, 
the pain management is quite complex. And so we can use models like I just described now, where we see essentially if we can stop the firing of a, um, uh, a neuron to the brain to signal pain. But there are other components uh, of pain as well. For instance, inflammation that causes pain. And yeah. Some of the minor cannabinoids have really good anti-inflammatory properties, as well as you know, are able to decrease this neurons firing off pain signals. And so it's being able to work out first in the lab, these combinations of properties, um, and then we take it to the clinic. And so what we have uh, at CureLeaf Clinic is we have a really comprehensive clinical outcome database. Yeah. Uh, where So every patient that we treat, we record not just, you know, their demographics, what the medications they take, their medical conditions, et cetera, but the outcome uh, related to their disease. Yeah. Patient recorded outcome measures, you know, side effects, adverse events, exactly like we record in a phase one trial. And so we can, we can take these medicines that we develop in the lab, uh, treat patients with them and compare the clinical outcomes in the real world through our clinic. And we use this wow. as an iterative process in the, in the drug development. But one interesting thing, back to your point about minor cannabinoids, is that what we've seen and we've published on this is that if you add some minor cannabinoids to uh, THC, the dose of THC that you require for a certain uh, analgesic effect, we're talking about pain medicine now, is decreased. And so that's great, of course, because some of the bad side effects from t are from THC. From you THC know? Yeah. Uh, and so if we can decrease that dose, get the same analgesic effect, then that's really good. Incredible. And, uh, and so, you know, I know we, and I know we got a couple other things to get to, but I just want to uh, make sure we talk about this for a second. So dosing and form factor is a really important, you know, piece, right? And so how are you starting to see, you know, obviously every, you know, patient is different and things of that nature, but, you know, are there any, are there any tips, tricks or, or things that our audience can think about? You know, we have a lot of medical patients, right? And a lot of, uh, you know, our audience has, you know, uh, who doesn't have people in pain in their life? My dad just, you know, went through a, a knee surgery, um, got MRSA after that, like all these sorts of different crazy things, right? And so when we look at things like dosing, um, and when we think of, you know, form factors, like what what kind of expertise can you lend in terms of some of your research and, and what you're seeing around some of that stuff? Yeah, I mean, this is interesting because um, like all medicines, you know, um, a certain dose will have a different effect on different people, right? Yeah, you know, that's, that's inevitable. Okay. Uh, but what we can find, again, through these re large real-world evidence that data sets, we now have, you know, over 24,000 patient data. We can see what the optimal dose is for certain demographics of people. Mm. And so that provides a good starting place and for different form factors. So, you know, we... When we started treating patients here in the UK, we just had sublingual oils, yeah. then got flowers. And you know now we've introduced pastilles into wow. the market this year, and we've also got vapes. And so the, we're learning all the time. And of course, with, with the new mode of administration, you have to learn dosing. Of and so, um, but that's, that's the right way to do it. Um, we are also obviously looking at, in, through our drug development, to do pharmacokinetic studies, which are more, you know, more pharma type uh, studies to really work out blood levels of different cannabinoids when you treat with different doses. Yeah, wonder, wonderfully said, um, and so much to drill into that. Thank you for answering that. I know that's not a, it's not an easy question to answer, right? Because everyone is so different. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, so you just opened the clinic in, in Sweden. What, what what was that like? You know, Sweden's not necessarily a country that anyone in Europe across any of our conversations has really been talking about. Um, so what was that journey like and how's it been so far? Yeah, uh, Sweden's a really interesting country um, because medical cannabis is legal. Um, the medicines are at the moment reimbursed by the state. And so there's a, there's a relatively low barrier for patients. You don't have that financial barrier that you have, for instance, uh, in the UK. Yeah. Um, and so that's good for patients. Um, the process of being able to prescribe is slightly more convoluted in that you need to um, submit an individual application per patient to have it approved. Um, so it takes a little bit longer, um, but the, the whole infrastructure is there. And so we're really excited to launch. We're partnering with um, Karolinska University uh, to set up a similar type study to the data collection that we got here in the UK. 
uh, and hopefully we'll be able to learn a lot um, through that process like we have here in the UK. That's wonderful. I, I was telling you before this, I know you're originally from Sweden, born and raised, right? I lived there for a couple semesters. And to see the progress that's being made is truly instrumental and is going to have you know ripple effects across all of Europe. And so, you know, being at this show, knowing that you just, you know, launched in Sweden, it's a, it's obviously a massive, massive piece of, of what you're doing. Um, what other drug pathways are you seeing across, you know, various different countries in, in, in Europe and who has, um, you know, a similar appetite um, for, you know, um, more clinics, you know, more advancement in medicine, more advancement in research? What are you seeing from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think that we've always thought that being able to, you know, communicate with the patients is really important. So mm. to be involved at the clinic level in this industry is, is really important because, you know, the, the bottom line is that we're, we're treating patients with medicines. And so the only way we can really take control of monitoring the outcome of that is having that relationship with the patient. So we think that, you know, having clinics is important. So Sweden's exciting, we've just launched there, but we're looking at a number of different uh, other countries in Europe where we're hopefully gonna launch another, you know, clinic uh, in the very near future. Yeah, I, I, one, wonderfully said. I, what, what's the biggest challenge between that patient um, clinic relationship? Is it the, the education curve of the patient? Is it, you know, the access? Is it, what, 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 is, what are the kind of the, some of the main challenges that you're seeing between that relationship today? Um, it depends where you are, but I think that, you know, overall as a, as a very broad statement, I think uh, it's awareness. You know, uh, we, did a, we did a survey here through uh, YouGov uh, a year or so ago, where we found that only 50% of the UK population know medical cannabis is legal, right? So the rest think that medical cannabis is still illegal. Yeah. This is almost five years on from, yeah. from the change in the law. And so I think for, for patients who, who could be potentially benefit from these medicines, the first thing is, you know, letting half the population know that it's available. Yeah, um, which sounds so trivial. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, it, it, you're right. It sounds very trivial, but it, and it's, uh, it's obviously um, very difficult. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it has to take a number of different facets, how you approach that, et cetera. But uh, I think that's really important. Then, then, you know, you have financial barriers in some countries mm. like in the UK. It's important to try to minimize those for patients so that you don't create, you know, two tier systems where some can benefit and others can't. Uh, we've tried to do that as much as possible um, here in the UK. But, you know, the, the holy grail will be here in the UK will be to get medicines on the NHS so that they are free to any patient. Yeah. Uh, and you can only do that through research. And so whilst that will involve randomized trials, et cetera, the real world data that we are collecting can definitely be used to complement and shorten that process. And we're, we're looking at that in very close detail. Michael, the work that you're doing for the industry as a whole, the work that Cureleaf is doing for you know, the, the, the world of medicine is so incredibly important. I f genuinely feel very blessed that we get this opportunity to learn from people like you and who have studied medicine their whole life. And truly the progress of this industry is is right here, right now with you building. And so just wanted to say on, on behalf of, you know, the future uh, medicinal industry, the future of patients, like I'm, I'm very, very, we're all very, very grateful for the research and the work that you're doing. So appreciate the time today. And uh, I, we're gonna have to jump back on here and have a further conversation because there's just a lot to uncover, but uh, really, really appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate Thank it, you. man. Cheers.